Good afternoon, everyone. It's September in Melbourne, and that means just one thing. The start of the footy finals, and today, the big elimination clash, the cutthroat clash between Fitzroy and Essendon out here at VFL Park. Welcome to Seven's match of the day. We know we're going to be in for a great encounter today between two marvellous sides. Fitzroy, of course, with that last-minute entry up into fourth position last week. The Bombers, they have had their problems throughout the year, but they've snuck into the five in the hope that they can win their third consecutive flag. The Fitzroy lineup, well, it's shrouded in secrecy at the moment. We still don't know whether Captain Matt Rendell will be taking his place in the side. Also, there's an injury doubt about Bernie Quinlan. I went down to the Fitzroy rooms a few minutes ago. They have 23 players stripped and ready. So, Rendell, will he play? Bernie Quinlan will he play? We'll know in about five minutes when the sides make their entry onto VFL Park. The bomber lineup, well, I can tell you that the three players who have been uh, dropped out of the Essendon lineup are Trevor Spencer, Chris Waterson, and Ed Considine. So the good news for bomber fans is that Billy Duckworth is in the 20 today. Duckworth to the forward pocket, Pete. First quarter of the 1986 elimination final from VFL Park. A few showers forecast during the afternoon. Petroy kicking left in the opening term. Madden and Reeves, won by Madden. Knocked it past Baker. Merritt fumbles. Chance for Barwick, but the ball went past him. And umpire Peter Cameron will bounce it again just off the edge of the centre circle. I'm just wondering who'll be picking up uh, the tank Mick Conlon too for Fitzroy, Bob. I think you find it's Michael Thompson. Luke, one of the best in the business, certainly. Nobody got a tap out of that. Reeves and Madden went up. And Peter Cannon found the first free kicker today. It's going to a player, I think, no, not going to Dwyer. I was going to say about the recruit of the year, but this fellow, number 16, Bill Lokan, played a great game last week. On to Reeves. Reeves from right half forward. Down to McIver, to Clayton. Over the head, no, not over the head of Osmond. Does get boot the ball in the goal square. Danaher marks it right on the line. But the ball will come back. Now it's a free kick. It's going to Fitzroy. It's back. going to Richard Osmond. I didn't see what for. Well, why wasn't that paid down the field, folks? Well, I am surprised, Lou, because, uh, well, maybe it was before the ball was kicked, and that's why it would only be uh, coming back to the player. Uh, if the player has disposed of the ball and then... And not necessarily Osborne, but if the player, the ball has gone downfield, then it is downfield. But in this case, it must have been beforehand. So Richard Osborne from about 20 metres out, but on a pretty acute angle. First score of the game, it should be. It looks like a goal. It is a great start by the Lions. Certainly in controversial circumstances. From that goal registering six points. But Troy, as I said, off to a good start. Bob, this could be a worry to Weston because they are notoriously slow starters, as they, as they have been all year. Now, we watch Osborne... Well, that's the most ridiculous yes. decision I've ever seen, in my opinion. Obviously, the umpire's frightened things might eventuate and they're, they're going to put a nail in the coffin very early, and they really did that. Well, if you can't bump somebody like that, it was hardly what you'd call a bump anyway. Well, pretty sharp being basketball. There's yeah. a bit of a box on now between Ruse and Merritt. And, of course, uh, Ruse has the job of minding Roger. The lodger, they call him. He's one of the roughest or toughest players in. I wouldn't should say the word roughest but toughest players in football. He's certainly tough. Ruse on the left, number one, one of the favourites for the VFL Best and Fairest Award this year, the Brownlow Medal. So, back into the centre again, and it's been an interesting start out here at VFL Park. Well, it certainly has, Peter, and we're off to uh, Fitzroy, one goal, six points, with the uh, Bombers yet to score. Pushed out again by McIver. There's a chance for Peak and the ball grabbed by Elshaw. That was beautiful play. And he's clear, goes for the long kick, looking down there for Duckworth. There's a great mark in defence by Hitchett. One of the most underrated uh, uh, defenders in the business. A very solid player, Hitchin. Reeves in front with the knickerbockers on as the ball hits the deck. Back to Donnell, he overruns the ball. Down goes McIver. There's a stack up here and the umpire will... No, he's going to play a free kick to Fitzroy. For on the shoulder. It'll go there to uh, McIver. Hand pass coming out now to Clayton. Clayton looking for Dwyer. Bork has got him covered, but the little fella bounces back, gets the ball again, tries to get it out again over there to Pekin, but the ball is out of bounds. So it's out of bounds on Fitzroy's half-forward line, about 60 metres out from their goal. Fitzroy, one goal, six points, with Essendon yet to score. But it's early days yet. Knocked out by McGrath. There's a hurried kick uh, that time by Richardson. Conlon gave a heave over there from Thompson, but picked up again by Reigns. Reigns as kickers out towards Hazard, couldn't hold the ball. Going in now as Turner taps it on nicely. 
good play by Turner. It was a free kick, but the umpire paid the advantage rule. It's picked up by Pekin and Fitzroy looking good. And that's Bernie Harris out there on the 50 metre attacking line. penalty too, Luke. A 15 metre penalty. This brings him inside the uh, 50 metre line. So he's about 35 metres out from goal. And a big chance to kick their second on a 45 degree angle. Into this quarter by just over four minutes. We'll wait on the result. One point. So Fitzroy move on to one goal, one seven points to Weston yet to score. But remember that the Lions are kicking with the breeze. So it's a good start uh, by Essendon, really, as we find Dunnell putting the ball wide. Out to Hawker, who is also certain to bowl well in the Brownlow medal. This guy gets a lot of possessions in a game, too. The Essendon centre man, Leon Baker, from left centre wing, short pass, Harvey Marks. Harvey at left centre wing. Good play. Yeah, short pass again. Now it goes to Hurd. Sam and a juggle. Picked up for Fitzroy by Turner. Harvey again in front of Pekin. Might get a 15 metre penalty. Well, the umpires are certainly not consistent. He would have got one otherwise. Duckworth, or oh, it's not a mark. Duckworth snapshot will be Essendon first score, and it's a goal. Uh, Billy bouncing back. He got KO'd last week and brings up Essendon's first goal today. Fitzroy lead by a point. Well, actually, Duckworth was a surprise selection today after having Cushion last week too, Bob. Yes, and I'm watching the replay. Um, it was, uh, I love the comment of a mate of mine this week. He said, well, some blokes can't play after concussion, but with Billy Duckworth, why worry? <laughs> One point the difference in the 1986 elimination final. Billy Duckworth bringing up the Bombers' first score. We've been playing nearly six minutes in the opening term. Trying to crash through his range. A bad hand pass, though. Goes out to Blakey. Under Pekin from centre field. High ball to the forward pocket. Knocked down by... It was uh, Danaher. And the Essendon skipper starting at full back. And umpire Peter Cameron will bounce it just past the 50 metre line right half forward flank for Fitzroy and Essendon stacking the Fitzroy forward line at the moment Keane got that tap out might be a free kick here is there or is he going to bounce it again it's the latter must be at least 20 players around the ball Good tactics by Essendon with Fitzroy kicking to the end, favoured by the strong breeze in this opening term, knocked down by Madden. Ball booted out to Osborne again for kick number two. He's already kicked their only goal so far. Osborne from right half forward flank. Well, he's getting away from Dunnell. His tag as the ball is kicked uh, deep into the forward pocket position. There's Madden, couldn't hold that mark. Goes after it again. He was grabbed, didn't have the ball. And Madden will take the free kick. There's no doubt about that one. I thought he had position, Lou, and I? Uh, I would have penalised Madden under those circumstances. Well, a quick hand pass comes out to Foles. The ball out wide. This is Glenn Hawker going after it now on the 50 metre defence line. Picks he's had a fantastic season. This guy hasn't put a foot on all day. And look at him go around that boundary line. He's gone about 100 yards. And he's let fly, but the kick wasn't worthy of the play as it goes along the ground. A chance here now for the ball to be picked up by Blake. He's grabbed, kicked off the ground by Hinchin. Coming in to meet it now is uh, Thornton. A good hand pass back to Hinchin. He was grabbed too high, fumbles the ball, but Hinchin, a terrier, goes after it. Trip. Picked up again, over to Ruse. Good play on the part of the Fitzroy. It's penalised Fitzroy. This, this, this free kick has penalised Fitzroy. Well, they were going away and running too, Bob. So the ball's got to go back. I think I nominated as a trip. Yes, but nonetheless, the ball had gone on That's and right. there was no holding play at all. There's one time where I think the advantage rule should have been paid. Well, OK, there's the kick. Comments coming from Triple Brownlow medalist Bob Skilt. Flying high was McKay. He's got up to a good start today. Bernie Harris scoots around the edge of the pack to kick the ball high back towards the centre of the ground. Punched on again by McGrath. Mc... That's little Dwyer going through. Fumble the ball. There's one in the back, but the umpire ignored that. Heard goes for a short pass. Not a good one. Going for the boundary line now, but Harris once again picks it up for Fitzroy. Over to McIver. The ball drops short. And a mark taken in defence down there by their skipper, Danaher. A quick hand pass. They're going right across the goals. It could be dangerous, but there's plenty of bomber players out there on their own. This is Range coming in to meet it now. And it bounces beautifully for him. A hand pass coming over to Walsh. Showing plenty of dash. Gets away from Ruse. A pass looking for Rezard, and he's dropped it again. Back, they're going to push in the back. He might have been lucky to get away with that, Peter. 
It was there though, Ezard, short pass, let's watch that again, Ezard's pass is effective, that's a mark and a free kick to Merritt. But Roger can take care of himself. Merritt, looking for Harvey or Salmon. Salmon might have got one in the back, Duckworth for goal number two, it's one point. And so the scores are level at VFL Park, seven points each. Billy Duckworth, certainly in the thick of things, scoring all Essendon's points to date. As we wait, Gary Perth, the informed defender of the year, to bring the ball back into play. Perth straight down the ground, assisted by the strong breeze, out to the edge of the square, might have been against Merritt, that picked up by Walsh, breaks the tackle well from Ruse. No mark, Pekin tries to get clear. That was Turner, or thought that it was, Duckworth. Oh, he's going for his next score, short pass, Mark S. Richard oh. Troy, cannoned into by his own player. Bad play, Essendon. I don't know what the fans are booing for, it was just bad play by two of their players that should have known better. No talking Bob. He certainly didn't mark it, there was no worries about right. that. There was no way known it could be played a mark. Salmon should have just been shepherding. Let's take a look at it again. Well, he was trying to shepherd, and we watch it on replay, he was trying to shepherd. Here's a hand pass, Merritt. Breaks the tackle well, long shot the goal against the breeze. The two number threes, Pert and Salmon. Oh, beautifully done from Pert, but picked up by Richardson. He's gone for a pass. Hawker breaks one tackle, shoots at goal from 25 metres out. It's a goal, Estimate in front. And the Bombers looking good in the first quarter against the breeze. The reigning premiers lead by six points. Well, I don't know the value of that uh, breeze, Bob, but if they kick two goals is the way they've done it, they're in a bit of trouble, Fitzroy. I would imagine so, Lou. I still think it's at least a three, maybe four goal breeze. If you look at the flags, uh, then there's certainly, as we watch on replay, Glenn Hawker putting it through. The flags are certainly blowing very strongly and straight to the end to which Fitzroy are kicking. Goal kickers for Essendon so far, Duckworth and Glenn Hawker. Six points the difference as we approach the 11 minute mark of the first quarter. And a very good crowd here today, well over the 50,000 mark, I would say. I think Pete and Bob would agree with that. Well, Matt got up too early. It was a silly uh, attempt to knock it out. The ball pushed down now as a go from McGrath to sent it deep down to the full forward position. Oh, they both got over there. Here's a go for little Bernie Harris to come in and pick it up on the boundary line. Oh, he nearly caught one from Danaher. Oh, oh, there's a free kick <laughs> down here in front of goal for Fitzroy because I think when they both fell over... Free to Essendon. Oh, oh he's given it to Essendon. Well, I couldn't work that out. This is Ezard picking it up at half-back. Tries to get a hand pass. A good tackle that time by Logan. And Billy Logan's had a pretty good season for uh, Fitzroy this year. One of the real triumphs. Well, they've got, they're a pack of triumphs, Fitzroy. There's no doubt about that. Ball knocked out by Matt. Picked up by Walsh. Kicked it off the ground. Knocked on by Al Shaw, and the ball is out of bounds on uh, Essendon's half-back line. Up towards the centre wing position. Into this first quarter, the elimination final for 1986, 12 minutes gone. Essendon, two goals, 1-13 to Fitzroy, one goal, seven. Logan trying to get out, well grabbed by Rain, but the umpire's not having a bar of a free kick there. He'll ball it up. Still on that uh, half-back line for Essendon. Well, actually, it's about uh, 80 metres out from the Fitzroy goal. Madden against McGrath. Well, actually, Madden's not doing that well in the knockout, Bob, so far. Well, I think you'd find he's uh, got most of them, Lou, but they're well, just not taking the ball away. Well, we're waiting now for the umpire to throw the ball in. Still from that half-back line for uh, Essendon. It'll be Madden against uh, McGrath again. M McGrath grabbed that one over to Osmond, overruns the ball, picked up by Hawke. He started off pretty well, but the kick is not so good. There's the number one man for the Brownlow medal, Ruse, to take them up. Plays on. He's gone straight across the ground, looking for perhaps Osmond. The bounce favours Donnell, though, in shadow for the afternoon. Donnell wins this duel, goes for the boundary line. Should have been a free kick out of Donnell. bounds for sure. That should have been a free kick to Donnell, Pete. He, he handballed it forward and then was, yeah, he was grabbed, grabbed, by, then. grabbed by the foot. So uh, you could have given one either way, like that. So he kicked to Donnell. On the bottom of that is Clayton. Stalemate, and the end result is, of course, a bounce. 13 and a half minutes into the term. 2-1 to 1-1, one, one, one. a difference of six points. Now, Essendon's tactics of crowding the Fitzroy forward line certainly paying dividends at the moment. Hawker again, but his kick is smothered on this occasion. It rebounds to Reigns. Back to Hawker once more. He's 
Blue said he started brilliantly today. Reeves underneath it. Oh, and Mark Gully. You can see uh, that coming for a mile, couldn't you? Billy Duckworth gets penalised 15 metres. When you talk about creating that forward line, Pete. And there was Reeves going down. And uh, Fitzroy, I should say Essendon, have got one player short on the forward line. They've literally got two centre men. Peaking. Both Reigns and Baker are playing in the centre. This is Scott McIver. Scott McIver from the short of right half forward flank. Fitzroy going the short game with the breeze, which is, uh, I don't know, arguable tactics. It's probably at least a four-goal breeze. Osborne tries to take the mark, couldn't do so. And once again, we'll see a bounce. Well, we've been playing, let's see, nearly 14 and a half minutes, and they've only got two goals on the board, or one goal on the board, isn't it? They've got two. Clayton going everywhere with Baker, McIver with Reigns, and Pekin going with the Rover. All knocked down to Key. He can't get clear, so, as I said, good tactics by Essendon. They're leading by six points. By John Russo having a few words. And a bounce in Fitzroy's right forward pocket. Danaher wins that knockout. Nobody can gain control of that. We'll see a boundary throw in. The ball up or throw in from that uh, forward pocket position about 30 metres around from the Fitzroy goal. There, one goal, one seven points to Eston, two, one thirteen. Knocked out by Madden. There's a chance for Rezard to get the ball out of the danger zone. Ruse overruns the ball. There's a chance for Reeves at the 50 metre mark. Did he throw that? The umpire said no. McIver doing pretty well. A long shot for goal to Beauty! He's played very well in this first uh, 15 minutes, but two goals, one 13 points apiece. Yes, McIver going everywhere with Jeff Reigns, and uh, it's brought McIver into the play, and he's shown great skill. We know the skills of McIver, as Reeves does a good job. Gets it across to Scott McIver, and the long left foot kick from Scott McIver, and the former Queenslander puts it right through the centre. Well, we're at the 16-minute uh, mark of the first quarter. Scores are dead level. Knocked out by uh, Madden, picking it up nicely as Ruse juggle that one. It comes back to Peak and a hand pass out to Dwyer. This is always dangerous. Oh, the hand pass wasn't so good to Ruse, put him under pressure. Ruse goes after coming to as well. Got one as he went through the pack that time. But the umpires found a free kick. Way. I think it might, let's see who it goes to. It'll go to Donnell for one in the back. So he takes that free kick on the 50 metre defence line. Al Shaw scouting out, that's his caper out there on that wing position, he seems to would be always out there, a hand pass comes back to Hawker, well tackled by Dwyer, a beautiful tackle and hold of the ball. Yes, good play by Dwyer, good well, decision by the umpire. Well, the kid from Caroida certainly made his name here in Victoria since Jack coming to Fitzroy, Bob. 15 metres, he's clear. Drives the ball over the half forward line. It beats them all a chance now for Mark Thompson to pick it up. He gets the ball in front of him. He doesn't lose it much, this fellow, but he's grabbed two. No, it's a half. Tattle too high, Luke. I think he got him on the shoulder. He's had a marvellous season, this fellow, and he would have a chance for the Brownlow, Mark Thompson. I think he may be a bit rugged for a Brownlow medalist, Bob. Well, he's been a few uh, rugged Brownlow medalist, Lou, but I think he'd uh, be a big chance in Essendon's best and fairest. That's Reigns taking the mark here, and McIver having a bit of a box on. Could be 15 metres against McIver. He's talking to Reigns, telling Reigns he could lose if he's not careful. Reigns goes wide, looking for Danaher, coming well down from fullback, but the umpire's giving a 15-metre penalty. I anticipated this brings Reigns up to the edge of the square. All it's done is penalise Essen. That's actually. right. The kick by Reigns is up to centre-half forward. Knocked out by Reed. Picked up here by Richardson. He's picked up a couple of kicks in the first quarter. Goes for Duck for Duckworth. Down goes Duckworth, he smothers the ball, they'll hold the ball, and a good decision yes. by the umpire, because he made no attempt to get rid of it. If they do that more often, it'll break up a few packs, wouldn't it? This is Scott McIver again, right centre wing, short pass, not a well-directed one, Gary Folds is there for Essendon, back to Donnell, good play. Donnell always confident in his play, disposes as well as a rule, he looks for Danaher, didn't really gain much from that though. Elshaw, short of centre field. Out towards right centre wing and Hawker. Oh, it should have been one for in the back, surely. It has been played, Pete. It's got us quite a very good first quarter, Bob, and so is Danaher, their captain. 
So Glenn Hawker oh. taking that free kick. Not too many arguments about that. Five kicks so far for number 33 for Essendon. You'll yeah, have a headache tonight too. I reckon for about a week uh, with a boot uh, stand or someone standing on your head. Glenn Hawker from right half forward flank. Short pass. Deep into the pocket. The mark taken by Richardson. Almost thought about playing on. Now he does. Short pass again. A bad one though. Merritt will have to be good here. Gets it back to Richardson with the left foot. Beautiful smother onto Ruse. Ruse the hand pass. Now it comes out to uh, Pekin from Turner. Ezard tackled well. Umpire John Russo says it's a stalemate. Probably could have let it go there. And it will be a bounce. Gary Perth got the decent one there, Pete. Winneman, Wareham, Madden and Reeves. One by uh, Madden again. Picked up by Ruse. Pekin, one of Fitzroy's best so far. Kickers, though, short up towards centre wing. Barwick. Fumble initially, now he gets clear of Thompson. Barwick up towards half forward for Fitzroy. They need a few goals before the end of this term. Beautifully done from Danaher to Thompson. Harris's tackle late, marked by Hurd inside the 50 metre line. Hurd short pass. Folds in front of Barwick. Might be 15 metres. Umpire Peter Cameron agrees. Played very well down there in defence, Danaher, Bob. Oh, he's been an excellent play, Lou. Hurd to Reigns. Reigns at left centre wing. Well, not the greatest of hand passes to the other import, Richardson. Didn't read that at all well, and it's going to be a bounce on centre wing. Well, Richardson had the chance to break clear then. That was a good hand pass from Reigns. He's tried to do too much, Richardson, Lou. Well, he could have had a shot from goal from the forward pocket. He was close enough to have a shot, but he didn't. I suppose you can be too unselfish sometimes. The ball up out there on the centre wing position. Well, actually, I reckon Reeves got that one out. I still differ uh, with you, Bob. I think that... Uh, Madden struggling in the ruck. Umpire will ball it up out there on the centre wing position. Scores dead level, 13 points apiece. Just on the 21-minute mark of this first quarter. It'll be Madden. Our yeah, statistician's on my side, Luke. He might be. 10 to 6 in favour of the hitouts, Luke. Yeah, well, I don't... Well, I okay, I might go along with Bob with this respect. They're not going anywhere. Hinchin in front. Pushed out by Duckworth. Hawker fumble that one. There'll be a ball up here for sure. Umpire's not hesitating with these ball up because I don't want any rough play today. This is the elimination final for 1986. The one that loses today is out of business for the rest of the season. Ball up again. Knocked out by Matt. That's a beauty over there to Harvey, but Harvey's kick wasn't too hot. Turner gets it out. A bad hand pass. Players making plenty of mistakes. Merritt was pulled to the ground. Picked up on the boundary line that time by Blakey. The kick goes back there towards Harvey. Harvey's got the mark. Good mark, that. And Harvey started off very well. He's had a very uh, ordinary season so far, but he could, could be his day today, the way he started off. Chance for the big fella. He couldn't hold it. Ezard goes down. A chance of a lifetime. McIver gets the ball over to Clayton. The ball out wide now. A chance for Mick Turner to mark that one. He does. Outmaneuvered uh, Connolly. He's going to play a free kick in the back to him. What do you reckon about that, Bob? No, I thought he just stood his ground, Lou. I wouldn't have paid it. So the free kick going to Conlon against Thompson. Now it's onto Clayton who takes the hand pass. Chance for Fitzroy here as it goes out towards Bernie Harris at left half forward flank. It's out of bounds. It was one of those cases, Pete, where if you get a nice bounce that comes back to you. That's right. Bernie Harris is off and running, but he it ran on instead of coming back as we see Dean Turner there after receiving some attention from the trainers. And a pretty physical first quarter. Madden in front. You know, Richardson's oh. kick is out of bounds on the full. So that will be a free kick to Fitzroy, and Billy Logan will take it. Well, he's made a couple of mistakes, but that was a bit uh, a bit hard, to, or a little bit uh, tough uh, that time because he was under pressure, uh, Pete. Heard in pursuit. Logan's gone for a short pass. It's effective. Oh, oh Mark, free kick, whatever, or might even be a booking. Well... If it's not a booking, then it'll be 15 metres, one would think. Yeah. Let's take a it look is, at that. It is 15 metres, and it will bring Pekin right within range, as we see it, from a different angle. And there's the mark with Terry Danaher on the mark. And, uh, and so Laurie. Grant Laurie. And normally a lovely kick, so I would imagine Fitzroy's third goal. We certainly need one because, as we mentioned at the outset, kicking with the assistance of the breeze, we reckon it's worth about four goals. 
Lowy makes no mistake with that one, though, and Fitzroy lead again. Scoreboard on seventh big league, Fitzroy 3-1-19, Essendon 2-1-13 in the elimination final. It's a good piece of play there, it's, it's Grant Lowy. And Which on replay now. Loken bringing the ball back. Lowy having no trouble taking the mark, and Tony Alshaw. I think he knew he might have been in a bit of trouble, Al Shaw, because he kept moving. That's the way to go. Don't stand there and look at the uh, BFL crime. From BFL Park, Fitzroy leading by six points now after Laurie putting through his first goal. Madden again pumping it away this time from the circle. Baker picks it up. Laurie now at full forward, Pete. He's obviously, I didn't see Keane come off. Whether Keane's out there or not, but Laurie on the ground. And by a course play on, McIver does just that. Out to Clayton at centre wing. Clayton in turn over to Little Dwyer, the recruit of the year in my book. Dwyer from left half forward flank. Long ball up towards full forward. It won't bounce through for a goal. It's a point though. No one at home. And behind taking Fitzroy's tally now to three goals, two. They lead Essendon by seven points as we approach the time on period. Seven points the difference. Waiting for Donnell to bring the ball back into play. Certainly been a tough game, but it's been a pretty fair one so, so far. Oh, at the back as Madden flies high, couldn't hold the mark and the ball is out of bounds. About 60 metres around from the Fitzroy goal. Fitzroy kicking with a strong breeze in this first quarter. Our man on the ground, uh, Peter Donegan, said it's worth about four goals. Madden got into his opponent's back. Back it comes to Hurd now out there on the half-back line. Drives it out looking for Rezard. Flies high, punches the ball out. But no one there for Eston. Blakey runs into trouble. Two Fitzroy uh, Eston players clash Reigns and Ezard. Down goes uh, Merritt, couldn't get clear. Still plenty of fumbling by both sides. That's Baker at the bottom of the back. And the umpire will ball it up. Out there on the centre wing. Bob, are Fitzroy doing enough kicking with this strong win? I wouldn't imagine so, Lou. Uh, I think that uh, Kevin Cheedy, if they remain as is, is uh, time on to play. And with only a seven-point lead, I don't think it's enough for the advantage of this breeze. Well, we see uh, Hurd grab the toe in the ball. And this gives Fitzroy a chance to go deep into attack through Thornton out there on the centre wing position. It's a funny game, though, sometimes, Lou. You, you think a side hasn't done enough with the breeze that they do even better against it. Waiting now for Thornton to send them deep into attack from that outer side wing. Well, it beat them all. Punched on again by Foles. It's a beauty. Over it goes now to Baker. Baker's clear. The kick is not a good one. Ruse got the mark. We don't see him do that too often. Blakey gets a hand pass over to Thornton. A hurried kick out wide. Coming in to meet it now is Elshaw. Elshaw and Bernie Harris go after this one. It beats them both. And the ball is out of bounds. Three goals, 220. Fitzroy to Weston. Two goals, 113 into this second quarter of the 1986 elimination final by 26 and a half minutes. I don't think Fitzroy have made enough use of Blakey. He's a loose man on the back line. When you're kicking with the wind, uh, I'd be more inclined to have him down the field a bit. Beautiful play by uh, the kid from Caroy. Dwyer over to Hinch and the ball goes over the Fitzroy half forward line. Danaher couldn't hold the mark, but he gets it to the ground. Knocked on by Donnell. Donnell tries to get out now. He gets a hand pass to Foles. A hurried kick back and Baker's got it. Started off slow in this quarter. He's had a couple of kicks in the last uh, five minutes. Baker out there at half back. A short pass, and Richardson's got it. He's made a couple of mistakes in this quarter, but he's handled the ball quite uh, frequently. A short pass, not a good one. Out wide it goes to Denner. Oh, was it up in the back? Oh, was it what? I should imagine so. But Denner's playing a funny sort of a game. He's down there, full back, and he's raving all over the ground down up to the centre line, Bob. Well, if uh, Fitzroy are prepared to let him come up the ground, uh, if I were Grant Lowry kicking with the breeze, I would stay back. If Danaher wants to come up, I certainly wouldn't bring Danaher into the play. Obvious free kick to Simon Madden, but it's been reversed. It'll go to Logan. Well, he's going to take his booking. number. It's a booking. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, I can never work it out when you take a free kick or get a free kick like they do something well, we foolish. Watch it now. Here we are on replay. Oh, 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 golly, not reporting. That is that. not a report, is it? Oh, oh. Well, I don't know what they're doing to football. Well, if that's that. a report, it's the worst I've ever seen in my life. Well, I'm surprised. Now, that's making this just a farce, really. He never touched him, really. We well, oh. didn't touch him. We've seen worse than that today, haven't we? Hey. Oh. Only What's the game times. coming to? Goodness me. Reeves, anyway, let's get back to the football, Reeves. Short of right half forward flank with the breeze. Down long towards full forward. Plenty up down to Preston that is folds. Reeves again. 
Richardson, free kick. No. Would have been a free forward. kick. He called the advantage will be. Essendon's possession, so he goes forward. Merritt misses it. Oh, got one a little bit too high. Roger Merritt, he'll take the free kick. He's not playing the advantage rule here. He's having a tough time getting away from Ruse. Not that Ruse is getting many kicks, Bob, but he's sticking to him, isn't he? Yes, but I think Merritt's done well so far, Lou. Merritt to half forward and Hawker again. Oh, he's grabbing on to Dwyer there. That should have been a free kick. He grabbed him by the arm. Pert off the ground. Up the left centre wing. Might be out of bounds before Duckworth can get there. It is. And the boundary throw in the follow next to the interchange area. 29 minutes gone in the quarter. Certainly produced its. Uh, Sensations. Well, certainly one major one with the report of Simon Madden, which was a joke in my book. Walsh. And up towards Ruse again. Good duel, this one. Developing between Ruse and Merritt. Well, I think Ruse has got him covered, but not by much. No, as I said, it's a good duel. And they both find players on their day. Ruse. Ball up towards Walsh. A juggle, but not played by the umpire. In goes Reigns. Scooped out to Donnell. Tackled by McGrath. On to McIver. Onto Osborne, onto Barwick, Barwick from half forward, long kick with the breeze, should just about be a score, it's closer to goal! And so Doug Barwick putting through a valuable goal for Fitzroy, close to siren time, 30 minutes gone in the quarter, 4-2 plays 2-1. I think we saw a good example there of just uh, what influence this breeze can have. As we watch on replay now, we see Barwick pick the ball up. Now, a long kick with the breeze and if you can get the advantage of the breeze he, he was had the wind coming directly over his shoulder there an excellent goal seventh big league the elimination final 30 and a half minutes got in the turn the difference is 13 points in favor of fitzroy knocked down again by madden this time picked up by baker from center field baker with a hand pass out wide to Donnell. over it goes now to hurt one back to madden they're fumbling that was a bad Fumble by Madden, back to Hurd, he spins back out of the pack, gets it over to Thompson, but a bad one, good play on the part of Ruse. Barwick fumbles the ball, plenty of mistakes made by both sides, but we've got to allow for that, there's a tremendous amount of tension, because the side that loses today is out of business for the rest of the season. It'll be a ball up out towards the centre wing it position right on the edge of the square. Free kick to um, Big Merritt, I think. Oh, yes. Well, he, I, I didn't see what happened there, Bob, but it's a 15-metre penalty, a hand pass. Coming out the foals at half four. The kick is up towards uh, Ezard. But there's the side to win the first quarter. And Fitzroy are in front, even though they've been kicking with the breeze. Four goals, two. 26 Fitzroy to Western. Two goals, one thirty. Second quarter from VFL Park, 13 points the difference in favour of Fitzroy, leading 26 to 13. The Bombers this quarter, though, have the assistance of a fairly strong breeze from the west. Ball I think it's Harris for Harris, Pete. Ball knocked down. Yes, yeah, Bernie Harris was on in the first quarter. Leon was on the bench. McIver, good tackle by Harvey. Hinchin at the bottom, comes up. Now it's Turner. Comes up with in the, the ball. Back. There's a free kick going Fitzroy's way for the offence that Lou mentioned. And Turner to take the three at left half-back flank. Reeves in front couldn't complete the mark. And we'll see a boundary throw in. 26 plays 13 as we approach the one-minute mark of the second quarter. Knocked down by Madden again. Very scrambly play here. Finally, it goes to Richardson. Well tackled. That could have almost been construed as holding the ball. Umpire Peter Cameron comes in pretty quickly. I don't think he's penalised Richardson. It's going to be a bounce. Still in Essendon's attacking zone. And I think we're in for a pretty uh, severe shower. Any tick of the clock, Pete? Well, it's looked like that since the start of the match, but we haven't had one. Although I must agree. Reeves wins that one. Gets it down to Thornton. Good tackle from Harvey. Good tackle and turn from Barwick. That tackle is a little bit too high. It will go Essendon's way. And the free kick going to Gary Folds. Folds just short of the right half forward flank. Puts the Bombers deep into attack. Looking for Salmon. He's been held. Touched the so far. But Duckworth, waiting behind, has taken the mark. Well, I don't know whether you call that good judgment or a little bit of luck, Bob. Because there's no doubt that Salmon and uh, Perth both misjudged the flight of the ball then. Well, I think uh, Duckworth did the right thing. He came in behind. And call it luck, whatever you like. Good play to Duckworth. Three kicks to Billy Duckworth. He's already kicked one goal. Is that two? It is. The Bombers are back in business in the second quarter. 
two goals to number 22, 4-2 to 3-1, seven points the difference. Well, there's no doubt about Billy Duckworth. Uh, this fellow is, uh, is invaluable to the side. Uh, strong player can play in defence, and uh, surprisingly enough for a backman, Bobby uh, acquits himself very well on the forward line in attack, doesn't he? Uh, look, Duckworth is a goer, Lou, and he's a, a typical example of uh, the, the type of player you say, what's it matter where you're playing? Two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Duckworth's second goal. Seven points in favour of the Lions. Seven points the difference. Essendon kicking with the breeze. Knocked out by Matt. That's a better knockout. Merritt fumbled that one. Down he goes. They pass the push in the back to him against McIver. He's got the free kick. It's a 15-metre penalty. This brings him over the centre-half forward position. Salmon making a lead, but he's pretty well covered by Pert. He goes again. There's a chance for Harvey. He's crashed by two and they've got no hope holding the ball. Pretty severe decision, that one. So the free kick to go to Thornton down there in the back pocket position for uh, Fitzroy. Seven points the difference. It'll be Blakey to take the free kick. Ball punched out by Walsh. And they're really coming down the ground. There's only two players on the forward line for Fitzroy. That is uh, Laurie and Danaher. They're all over the centre line, but that shows you how strong this breeze must be. So the Bombers have got a big chance in this quarter. They're still going to put goals on the board, though, Lou. That's right. Now, what Fitzroy have to do is crowd play like the Bombers did in the first quarter and stop this very smart attack of Estes. Stephen Clark uh, ready to come onto the ground. I think I'll go along with Bob Skilt. I'd have brought Vanderhaar on down there on the forward line, particularly in this quarter, kicking with the breeze. It was knocked out by Reeves. Thornton gets a hurried kick. Cop one as he kicked that one as the ball goes for the boundary line and out of bounds on the centre wing position. Into this quarter, the second of the elimination final for 1986 by four minutes, seven points the difference. 26 plays 19 in favour of Fitzroy. Knocked out by Madden the second time. Baker was grabbed. He'll get a free kick. Didn't have the ball. Grabbed him too high. And number four for Essendon will take the free kick out there on the centre wing position. Kick number five for Baker. Played pretty well. In front is Salmon. Well played by Perth. The Fitzroy defender knocked it out. Thornton goes for hand pass. Grabbed by Harvey. Back to Elshaw. He's grabbed. He goes for the hand pass. Ruse has grabbed two and down he goes. They're going over like nine pins at the moment. And the umpire's found a free kick. Fitzroy's. It'll go to Fitzroy. And we'll have to wait. Will it be Ruse to get the free kick? Hinchin, he looks a bit sore too. Hinchin, well, he uh, started off the game with a bruised hip. So Hinchin to take the free kick down there in the back or out towards the half-back line. In the quarter by just on five minutes, seven points the difference in favour of Fitzroy. Elshaw to come off, Lou. Clark to come on. Hinchin's kick dropping a little bit short. Reeves tries to get it out. Baker just about caught with the ball. In fact, it will not be a decision. It's going to be a bounce. Decision not in favour of Fitzroy, that is, as Elshaw does come off, and as Bob mentioned, replaced by Stephen Clark, number 12, the blonde headed rover. Madden and Reeves. That one's won by Reeves, but I must go along with Bob. I think that uh, Madden has rucked fairly well so far today. Oh, oh, that is too high. That's a booking. You can back that in. That has got to be a booking. And it's on. Perhaps not surprisingly. And, and while the umpires take a few numbers, there's a wrestle on the ground. And uh, Dana is still down, too. Well, I should imagine our friends in, uh, uh, Danilo, 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 is, yep. in Canada and uh, the United States through ESP and uh, CTV would be enjoying this uh, bit sort like of us, a game, uh, uh, Peter. And and a few, uh, box on to ice hockey like that, don't they? Let's take a look at that again. Well, I don't think there's anything vicious about no, it. I think it's reported a lot of high tackle. Uh, but it wasn't a swing of the arm, he just grabbed him too high. There, were, there was nothing vicious about that at all. They were all he left for the rest of the week is a stiff neck. Oh. 15 metres anyway, the end result of it all, and a booking, so Donnell has the free kick, he's laughing. Now he's got an appointment on Monday night. And the rain is coming down to... Well, there's not a player on the Fitzroy half of the ground. That's right. Knocked away by Reeves from the back of the pack. Michael Thompson, Duckworth, well caught. Duckworth's already kicked two goals, though. He's been a very damaging player up there. Now it finally comes back to Baker. A long kick with the breeze. There's a go. It's a point the difference at VFL Park. 
The Bombers handling the breeze much better than Fitzroy did. 4-2 to 4-1. There's no doubt about Baker. A great finals player. Bob, I think he's played in five consecutive grand finals, but always turns on his best in the final. Oh, Lou, I think Baker's had a great year. I think when Essendon were really struggling, Leon Baker was one of the players who continued to play well right throughout. And, uh, he and Glenn Hawker, I think, are the two uh, players who have shown great consistency right through the season. The rain teeming down now at VFL Park. That was Baker's first goal, 4-2 to 4-1, in front of just on 59,000 fans at league headquarters. Reeves gets cannoned into by Madden, picked up by Merritt. Merritt short of half forward. Long ball again with the breeze at the back as Pert tries to get it away from Salmon but can't get a swing at the ball. It's out of bounds. Essendon's right forward pocket. Well, Lou, I don't think Salmon has uh, done a thing yet. I'd have uh, Vanderhaar out there straight away. Well, Pert doing a very good job down there at fullback. Not that he's getting many kicks or many hand passes, but he stopped the big fella from getting a kick and he's giving away inches. Reeves and Madden. Salmon now with a chance onto his right foot. Speak of the devil one behind so his first kick of the day registers one point and it levels the scores scores dead level 26 points apiece into the second quarter of the 1986 elimination final by just over eight minutes Vanderhaar actually getting ready on the interchange bench to come on Lou well it'll be interesting to see whether it takes the place of Salmon number three ball back into play again out towards Ruse didn't bounce too well for him he's caught the beautiful bump and he's out of business Oh, and that, that was a hip a... and shoulder. You well, call I it. don't know what's happening well, to these you guys. You call it a beautiful bump, Lou. Well, I did. What would you say it was? A beautiful bump. Well, I may be wrong, but these umpires are making this a little bit of ticky-ticky uh, touchwood as the ball is uh, by Hurd. Comes out there to uh, Mick Thompson. Not a good kick. A bumble by uh, Laurie. You know, peaking it was. It's McIver kicking the ball back out there. Overrunning the ball now was uh, Danaher, but he's got a chance to rebound. He does. He's played a great game in defence, particularly in the first quarter. Punched out by Merritt. Coming in to meet it now is Hawker. He runs into uh, Reeves. Can't get clear. Vanderhurst grabbed. Down he goes. Picked up by Ruse. Goes out wide. I think he was looking for the boundary line. He might make it. He does. And the ball is out of bounds. About si Salmon off the ground for Vanderhurst. As soon as he hit the deck, Vander Harry copped a pretty heavy bunt. Down bounds about 70 metres around from the Eston goal. Reeves tried to juggle that one. Another scrimmage developing there at the half forward for Eston. The ball is out of bounds. Uh, it will be a ball up. Four goals to 26 points apiece into this second quarter by just over nine and a half minutes. Well, it hasn't been the most stylish football in the world, but it's been a pretty tough and torrid game. And this is the sort of game we expect in finals. Hawker trying to spin up the package. Did he hang on too long? As the ball comes back there to Donnell. Knocked on by Osborne. Picked up by Reigns. A hand pass. Beautiful play by Dwyer. Look at the little fella go after. Great play. Did he get one in the back? The umpire said no. As the ball is picked up by Foles. Back to Danaher. Setting up a good example. It was a bad kick there. And the ball is over the line and out of bounds. Out of bounds on the centre wing position, just over the 10 minute mark of the second quarter. Scores dead level, four goals, two, 26 points apiece. Madden to contest the ruck duels. Loses that one out to McGrath, actually. Now a chance from Leon Harris to Clayton. Clayton from right half forward flank. He's gone long up the full forward. There's no one there. Conlon finally. Was he grabbed? Second chance off the ground. Perhaps it had hit the behind post. No. Now it's through, I think, for a point. And the rain comes down again for Troy's first score. I think of the quarter. Yes, it is. That came up nearly at the 11-minute mark. And the Lions once again in the lead, but only by that margin, one point. Well, it's all right grounding the uh, defence, but when the ball does go onto your forward line, sometimes you're in trouble, aren't you? Well, well it could have worked out then, Lou, because with Conlon's pace, and they kicked it into the open space, it could have almost come off, but he didn't get the right bounce. Mark taken by Harvey on right centre wing. Ruse hasn't got a jumper on, Pete. <laughs> Real beefcake stuff. <laughs> Vanderhaar. Oh, Laurie got one too high. Umpire Russo says no free kick for that play on. It's a very scrambly game. Vanderhaar in and out of the pack. Now a chance for Perth. It'll be nice and cold out there without a jumper today, I tell you. Now the trainer is out. He's given him another jersey. And let's see if he's got the same jumper. I think it's number one. Yes. McGrath and Madden. And it comes to Baker. 
Baker finally finishes up with it. Beautifully done from the Essendon centre man. Vandahar and Pert. Reeves. Vandahar again with Ruse this time. Down goes Vandahar looking for a free kick. It's out of bounds though at Essendon's right half forward flank. About 50 metres from goal. 12 well, minutes. Into the, the Lions are doing quarter. a similar, we're using similar tactics that uh, the Bombers used in the first quarter. It's paying dividends at the moment. Well, I think that with a player like Pert, he's punching away at all times and really makes it hard for any forward to take a mark. So too will the rain for that matter. Condon and Nick Thompson out of bounds in front of that pair. Condon looking for in the back. He gets no joy from the umpire though. And throw in will follow. And a shower of rain has all but passed. Knocked down again by Madden. Off the ground, Heard. Down goes Merritt, could have almost been in the back. Clark kicks it off the ground, on the full, free kick to Fitzroy. And the recipient will be either Turner or D uh, Dwyer. It's going to be Turner. Dean Turner at left half-back flank as we approach the 13-minute mark of the term. Walsh, good spoil. Finally picked up, that was by Clayton. Conlon takes the grab to his twin in Barwick. Barwick up towards half-forward, it's over the head of Danaher. He'll go for the boundary line, the Essendon skipper does it successfully. And the throw-in will follow about 15 metres from the Fitzroy goal. They lead by one point, but they've only scored one point so far in the quarter. Salmon on the bench. And we're just on the third and a half minute mark of this last, uh, second quarter. Knocked out by Madden. Conlon tries to get that clear, goes after it again, but the umpire will ball it up about uh, 15 to uh, 20 metres out from the Fitzroy goal. They're four goals three. Steady, Fitzroy have steadied a bit. Yeah, my word, they're doing pretty well. They're looking just as good as Essendon. And the Bombers are kicking with a pretty stiff breeze. Ball knocked out again. There's a chance for a goal. That time... Out of bounds. By Pekin. And the ball is out of bounds. That'll be a penalty free kick to go down there to uh, Donnell in the back pocket position. Crowd of just on 60,000. Good crowd for this elimination final. Walsh in front, a strong mark. He's playing well, Lou. He's played a very good game. Well, Perth's doing a similar type game, and this fellow hasn't played a bad game either, Harvey. But he's certainly a long way away from half forward. That's his uh, normal position. Ah, oh, good mark uh, to McIver, one of Fitzroy's best players in this first part of the game. And there's a good pass. Out it goes to Leon Harris, who's coming back after a broken leg, but he's too slow at getting rid of that. Well played by Roger Merritt. And good play on the part of Fitzroy's uh, turn as he lets uh, Logan get clear. There's McIver again. He spun in a two-packs. Great play by McIver. They get the ball over there to Hinchin. Back to Turner. Oh. He's grabbed around the neck. The umpire's paid the advantage rule out to Leon Harris. Now, he won't lose this one. He's got a paddock to run, and he goes for the long kick. Looking there for Osborne. The back there was Danaher. Tapped down. Picked up by Donnell with the hand pass. Not a good one. There's a go now for Pekin to drive the ball. Was it the Pekin to drive it down? Picked up by Thompson. The ball is driven out long out towards that wing position and the ball grabbed here by Turner. Waiting on Turner to put Fitzroy back into attack. 27 plays, 26 a point the difference. There's a good mark to Clayton. This fellow's a very strong player. That was a strong one. He took a pretty heavy knock then. Umpire walking over. He's going to take his him. number. Oh. Oh. They're going to have a full night next Monday night at the Tribunal. They're booking oh. everybody. Bob, what do you think of that? Well, the only one they haven't booked now is the head trainer. No, I don't think he did take the pin oh. out, did he? Did he? I think he's changed his mind. He's given a 15-metre penalty. Now he's writing down. He's writing it down. It's uh, Umpire Russo, I think. Yes. Yes, he was recorded. It's oh, a boundary well. umpire, Pete. A boundary umpire, wasn't sorry, but yeah. A kick by Clayton, won't make the distance. Nearly a mark to Laurie, but the ball is finally forced through for one point. That gives Fitzroy a two-point advantage. Elshaw back on, Clark off. Four goals, 4.28 Fitzroy to Western, four goals, 2.26. And we're just on the 16 and a half minute mark at this second quarter. Mark taken by Richardson and he's off. To centre wing, Glenn Hawker, great mark. And he's had a fine uh, season, Hawker. And as I said, we'll poll well in the BFL best and fairest of Brownlow medal coming up in a couple of weeks. Good spoil by Merritt. Richardson gets met solidly by Reeve. That's out on the full. It'll it's be on behind play. Fitzroy free kick. Now, on the bottom of that is Roger Merritt. And full Ruse.
things becoming just a little bit willing. Thornton in the thick of it. Rains and Blakey there. Looks like wiser heads prevail. Now, Paul Ruse gets reported and would be interesting, but that uh, Robbie Matter of Brownlow contentions, Bob? I think it does, Pete, but uh, I don't believe it should. It's one of those things, I think, that as far as uh, things like the Brownlow are concerned, the season finished last week. Good mark to Key. Keane's kick is short. Barwick taps the ball on. Good play. Here's a go now. As we see Blakey give a hand pass back there to Peak and well intercepted that time by Alshaw. Good play. He's played a fairly good game. Over to Baker. A short pass. A chance now for Reston to go deep into attack. As we see Hawker grab the ball. A short pass looking for Rezard. Should have gone directly down the ground. I noticed that Bandahar was bowled over pretty easily then. And the ball is out of bounds on uh, the Bombers half forward on about 60, 70 metres around from their goal. Fitting around too much, Essendon. They've got the eight of the breeze, and yet they want to continue with these little zigzag short passes around the boundary line. Ball back into play again. Back it comes to Baker. Weaves his way through the pack. He was grabbed at the umpire call play on. Rightly so as it comes out now. Pushed out of bounds by uh, McGrath and uh, Walsh. And the ball is out of bounds. Up there towards the centre wing position. 20, Salmon still there and not looking the best. 26 and a half minutes gone of this second quarter. Four goals, four, 28 Fitzroy to Western, four goals, three, 27. McGrath takes the mark in front of Walsh, although Walsh has had him pretty well covered most of the afternoon so far. The right half forward flank, the kick though is short to half forward, almost a mark to Leon Harris. From the 50 metre line against the breeze, Thompson. Conlon over the top of him. Looks for uh, Donnell, Barwick, well tackled, Heard scooped out to Richardson. And Richardson in plenty of, uh, with plenty of time. Bad pass though to Baker. But Baker's good enough to make amends. Got one too high. The advantage rule paid. He did give the free kick. Down and field. Taken on centre wing by Keane. Down field, field free, kick free kick to Essendon. To uh, Glenn Hawker. 15 metres, not going to wait for it. Hawker streaming forward. Kick number 10. It's a goal! No, no, it's off the ground from Hinchin. Now, it's neither. Now, what's going to happen? McGrath's down behind play, Pete. It's going to be a free kick, so no score. McGrath down behind play. That's right up at the other end of the ground. Now, it happened when in that piece of play. It wasn't one. It was an incident behind play. Out of bounds. From Keane. So a boundary throw in. McGrath now looks as though he's OK. That's good news for Fitzroy. And umpire John Russo will ball it up. Very right on the 50-metre line. Paul Salmon off the ground. Peter Donegan. Uh, Peter, Don have you got some news on him? Yes, Pete. Apparently, he's got a bad whack on the nose, but I just spoke to the doctor, and he said he's OK, but he's pretty groggy at the moment. Yes, he didn't look too good when he came off. Duckworth has already kicked two goals. He won't score anything with that kick. It's out of bounds on the full. And it will be a free kick for Fitzroy to be taken by Paul Ruse or uh, by... Uh, Gary Perth. Not a very stylish game, Bob, but by golly, it's a tough game, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very aggressive game with both sides applying a lot of pressure, Lou, and a great quarter by Fitzroy. Half-time siren not too far away. Ruse in the thick of that pack, but couldn't come down with the ball. Looks like he was at Vanderhaar. Out of bounds again. Vanderhaar starting the game on the bench, coming out of the second quarter. He's really made a great contribution so far. Madden and Keane. Neither get a tap out of that one. Thornton's kick is short. Now Vanderhaar with the opportunity. A wobbly left foot punt kick. Now towards Richardson and Pert in pursuit is Merritt. Well played by the Fitzroy fullback. Merritt still with him. Ball socket off the ground again. In comes Thompson. It's out of bounds now. Might be on the full. No, it wasn't. Boundary throw in on centre wing. Well played, Gary Pert. Certainly was, Peter. 29 and a half minutes gone. Fitzroy still in front by a point. They put up a tremendous show in this second quarter, kicking against the breeze. They looked in plenty of trouble, but they're hung in there. The ball kicked back to their half forward line. Over the head of Perth, and uh, down goes Dwyer. The ball is out of bounds. So there's the sign to win the second quarter, and what a good one it was by Fitzroy. Four goals, four, 28. Essendon, four goals, three, 27.
Seven's Big League from VFL Park, being seen live through OTC on ESPN in the United States and CTV in Canada. Umpire John Russo checking the readiness of all players. The loser, of course, of today's match drops out of the playoffs of 1986. Third quarter, and the two points for difference in favour of Fitzroy against the reigning title holders Essendon. Fitzroy this quarter kicking to the left of screen. Reeves got that knockout onto McIver. Barwick takes it again. Barwick long ball up towards half forward, full forward almost. Osborne had the chance. Now he's got uh, the hand pass out. That's effective. Picked up by McGrath in towards the goal square. That will be a point. Well, Thompson, yes, he'll uh, just take it over the line. And so that makes the difference now. Three points. That was brilliant play on the part of Barwick then, Bob. Real uh, soccer style, wasn't it? it? Certainly was, Lou. We wait the ball to come back into play. Long kick by Folds. Almost marked by Tanner, actually. Umpire didn't play it. Bernie Harris gets the hand pass out. On towards Peek, and now it's Shane Hurd's turn. Back to Donnell. Almost out of bounds. And Leon Harris this time. Harris will be right on the 50-metre line, but, of course, should be assisted by the breeze. And against that, he's right on the boundary line. A vital quarter for Fitzroy this third one, Pete. Got to make every post a winner, don't they, Lou? Certainly do. Mark taken now by Blakey. Lakey at right half forward flank. All this year, Fitzroy, uh, well, the Eston have been slow starters and they've held on in this uh, yeah, first that's half. Right. Now, Fitzroy got to get a fair, sco a fair score up, uh, kicking with a strong breeze. I think they need a five goal lead. Not a bad sort of a kick. Oh, good mark to Madden. And Gary Folds directing him to kick towards what I guess is the defensive side of the ground today. With the breeze being what it is. Madden. Looks for rain. Well, the daylight today, Pete, it's likely to rain. Uh, if you can get a few on the board and then uh, have the advantage at three-quarter time, if the rain comes, then the wind often drops. Yes. Rain's kick also dropping short. Baker has it knocked away from him. Chance for Elsa, he's in the bottom of that pack, but umpire Russo will bounce it at the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Still uh, two points the difference in favour of Fitzroy. Ball up uh, on that centre wing position. Crowd of just on 60,000 here today. Knocked out by Madden. Down goes Hurd. Did he get one on the back? The uh, umpire said, hold the man. And he'll take the free kick out there on the centre wing position for Esther. Now they're kicking against a very strong breeze. Our Peter Donigan, our man on the ground, said it's worth about four goals. Only time will tell. Madden got in front of a pack, tried to uh, frame a free kick there, but the ball comes out the Reeves. A good hand pass over there to Ruse, out wide towards Walsh and McGrath. Pushed on by Walsh again, goes for the boundary line. He played it safe and the ball is out of bounds. But it's up towards Fitzroy's half forward line, about 80 metres out from their goal. Ball back into play again. Madden. Well, Reeves spoilt that one too, as we see uh, Aston player grabbed around the neck. That was Thompson, but the umpire didn't have a bar of that free kick. Dwyer breaks quick, clear. Sends the ball over the half forward on a chance for Austin. He's got it. Got in front of Donnell that time. He's about uh, 55 metres out. Gone for a short pass. It's a good one. Grabbed by Bernie Harris. A running shot at goal. But a tough target and through for one point. So the difference now, three points. 30 plays, 27. Four goals, 6.30. Fitzroy to Western 4.3.27. Three and a half minutes gone of this third quarter of the 1986 elimination final. Some up balls for the side that lose today. Ball marked by Mark Thompson. He's been a pretty quiet play today, Bob. Yes, yeah, not the usual uh, Thompson that we have seen dominate from the back pocket. Baker, again. Baker goes for a pass and Richardson went for that mark. Got it too high. Now, Richardson had quite a few possessions today, but he's wasted a lot of chances going with those short passes. On replay, we see uh, Richardson cop one from Blakey. This is well, it wasn't the first half. He might have been reported. That's right. <laughs> Bobert goes now to, uh, from Hurd. Pushed out. Well played by Ruse. That time had uh, Merritt covered all the way as a chance for Mick Tomlin. He's been pretty quiet too. He's been well covered but got a hurry kick. A chance for Hurd to mark again. Down there at half back, he does so. So four and a half minutes gone of this third quarter. It's three points the difference. In favour of Fitzroy. They're kicking to the end that's favoured by a pretty strong breeze, but Ray starting to fall pretty heavily at the moment. Walsh. Hey, well, Walsh, Pete. Yes, out marking his teammate there, Simon Madden. On to Thompson. Thompson from centre field. At the back is Turner. 
Ezard pushes his opponent out, almost came out with the ball to Thornton's kick as a short one up towards centre wing. And the mark taken for Fitzroy by McIver. He's got it over to a little Dwyer. Osborne going for mark number two this quarter, but couldn't take it. Back it goes to Thompson. Well, up the field now. Elshaw at centre field. A hand pass on to Baker. Baker to half forward. Beautiful Merritt. pass. Well, Merritt very confident decides to go for the bounce. Gets past Reeves. He can score from there. Roger Merritt, a goal would put Essendon in front, but he can't <laughs> find the big ones. And through for only one behind. That was brilliant play on the part of Merritt, too, dodging around those uh, players like a rover, Bob, but uh, wasted the uh, great opportunity he had. Yes, he, did, he did everything right, Lou, but uh, except the way he kicked it. Two points the difference as Pert brings the ball back into play again. He's found Pekin. Pekin's kick around the boundary line. The mark is taken by Ruse. Amid some attention from Glenn Hawker. Short pass by the Brownlow favourite. In towards Leon Harris. Back into the side today after a broken bone in his leg. And a half forward again tries to find Osmond. Walsh. Over the head of Danaher. But backup support though. And plenty of it from Elshaw. The Essendon skipper does the necessary shepherding. Now McIver comes at him. Kick not a good one. Over the top is out. Went for the screamer. Couldn't take it. Might have been a high tackle against Harvey. On the other hand, it could have almost been holding the ball. And so the umpire has decided it will be a bounce at half forward for Essendon. Reeves and Madden. One by Madden. Clayton gets around Baker. Up the centre wing. Knock away by Folds. In goes Barwick. Now it's McIver. Wobbly left footer. Donnell, as the rain really teams down now. What a fumbling down there. Essendon had possession and gave it away too easily for mine. Picked up by Loken. That's getting heavy now, that rain. Harris in front. Now yeah, having a shot was oh. Barwick. And Barwick's put it through. Yes, for a goal. In the rain. Barwick second and a valuable one for the Lions. 5-6 to 4-4 four, four at BFL Park. 36 players, 28. Yes, it really is raining at the present moment. And uh, Loken hooks it over the shoulder. On replay, we see Mark Thompson punch the ball away. Excellent forward work by Doug Barwick to pick the ball up and onto the left boot. And the father, father of uh, just a two or three days, uh, Doug Barwick, puts it through for his second goal. Two goals to Barwick, one to McIver, one to Laurie and one to Osborne. The goal kickers for Fitzroy, the Lions by eight points, seven and a half minutes into a wet third quarter. A very valuable goal kick by Barwick. Ball pushed back down towards the uh, Blakey. Blakey drives it up to the half fourth on a punch out that time by uh, Mick Thompson. Dwyer going in after the ball. He doesn't mess about this little fellow. I thought it might have been a push in the back, but the umpire said no, it'll be a ball up out there towards the edge of the square. Now towards Fitzroy's half-forward line, they're in front by eight points. We were just on the eight-minute mark of this third quarter of the 1986 elimination final. Knocked out by Ree. Ball picked up by Foles, kicked out wide towards the wing position. And it'll be out of bounds, so there'll be a throw-in from that uh, centre wing position. Well, Fitzroy, that goal, Bob, uh, is worth about four under these conditions, isn't it? Yes, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see whether the wind keeps going or whether it drops with the rain, Lou. Knocked out by Madden. Richardson gets a hurried kick, but a poor one. Harvey fumbles, but he's clear now. Boots the ball down towards the full forward position. Chance for Van der Harbour. Perth got him well covered. He certainly put uh, Salmon out of business now. He's a true uh, defender, Pert, isn't he? That's right. What he won't take a mark unless it's absolutely sure, Bob. Eight points the difference. The ball out of bounds, about 40 metres around from the bomber goal. Knocked out by Madden, goes after it again. That's Thornton getting a hurried kick back there to Logan. Falling over his herd, this gave uh, Logan the break to get clear, drive the boards off the side of his boot, not a good kick, and uh, this fellow we said wasn't playing too well in the first half has bounced back into business in this third quarter. That's Thompson. Cross towards uh, Baker, fumble, grabbed by Leon Harris, punches the ball away beautifully, over it goes to Blake, he took too long to get rid of it. A good hand pass from Reigns. That was a ripper bit of play by Reigns. Out to Richardson and half forward. Goes for a pass. Trying to find Hawker. They missed it. The Fitzroy defence, but Hawker fumbles it. Very slippery out there. And players finding it very hard to get clear. Duckworth at the bottom of the pack. And the umpire will ball it up. 
Well, Just worth having a word to the umpire, but I don't think Peter Cameron's going to take any notice. Not much notice of that. He was appealing for a free kick, saying that he got one on the back. Knocked out by Madden. Back to Duckworth again. He's grabbed. Gets a hand pass back to Wazard, who's been a very quiet player. He's on his feet now. Gets a hurried kick back. Oh, Van de Haar back to Hawker. Tapped out. Has a go for El Shaw. He might have got this one. No one point. So they're really struggling, the Bombers. He had the chance of a lifetime. Seven points the difference. Five goals, 6.36 Fitzroy to Essendon. Four goals, 5.29. Golden opportunity missed. And only one point would have been a valuable goal. That's a long kick almost up towards the centre wing position. McIver, the opportunity. Ruse in pursuit. Danaher. Ruse has kicked towards the left half forward flank. Walsh up in front. Couldn't complete the mark. Thornton tries to crash his way through. Plenty of red and black Guernseys there. Harvey's hand pass is picked up by Michael Thompson. Around to the centre wing position. The palm on from Merritt. Finds Hurd. Gets clear of Loken. Short pass by the bomber defender. The mark taken by Madden. Madden on right centre wing. He's gone for a short pass. That's effective down to Duckworth. Duckworth again. Short to half forward. Hawker seemingly everywhere. Marks but 50 metres from goal. Poor defence by Fitzroy. Bomber players everywhere. Richardson a clear shot at goal. Four points. Bombers back in business. In no uncertain terms, 5-6 to 5-5, five, five, the Lions by a point. That's a lovely piece of football there. Good team by Essendon. And as on replay, we see Hawker goes short. Richardson steadying, playing on, and a lovely kick by Richardson. And we know what great skills Mike Richardson does have. Richardson's first goal. Essendon's leading goal kicker is Billy Duckworth. He has two. Other contributors have been Baker and Hawker. On seventh big league, we approach the 12-minute mark now of the third quarter. Only one point the difference after that goal from Richardson. And Fitzroy's lead, of course, at the moment, not enough because Essendon will have the breeze in the final term. Reeves onto Dwyer. Dwyer out towards the left half-forward flank. Donnell. Essendon playing with a lot of confidence now after that goal. And that really was a morale booster against the win. So a boundary throw-in some 50 metres from the Fitzroy goal. But Essendon's uh, defence is rock-like at the moment. Madden and McGrath. One by Madden. No one getting clear there. Now it comes out to Hawker again, covering a lot of territory onto Ezard. Ezard's kick dropping short, and the mark taken by Reeves on centre wing. And Reeves with the ball there on that centre wing position. Goes for a hand pass. It's OK. He's found Blakey. He's got a paddock to run and goes for the long kick. Lobs it up to the full forward position. They go now for Conlon. Breaks clear. He's grabbed. Umpire Gore playing it's out of bounds on the foot. It'll be a penalty free kick to Fitzroy. But Conlon's found it very, very hard to get kicks today. He's been well covered. Only three kicks, Lou, and one handball. Now the ball uh, will go down there to Fitzroy. And it's Bernie Harris to take the free kick in the forward pocket. A point the difference. Fitzroy kicking with the breeze. I think that breeze may have dropped it. Oh, I don't know. I think uh, we thought it may have dropped it. I don't think so. Waiting on Harris from about uh, 30 metres out. Barwick giving a lead, but it's ignored. There's the kick. We'll wait on the result. It's one point, so it's two points the difference. Five goals, 7.37 Fitzroy to Essendon, 5.535. 13 and a half minutes gone of this third quarter of the 1986 elimination final. Short pass, dangerous. It's OK, and it's marked here by Bate, who's played a fine game today. It's still a dangerous kick, that one, though, Lou. I reckon, but I'd go for the long kick, kicking against the breeze. There's a go now for Mark Thompson. We mentioned about him not playing so well in the first half, but he's come to light in this third quarter. Up towards Van der Haar flies. He's got it. I think this might be Van der Haar's first bounce, mark. Is it out of bounds? No, 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 no it's OK. Van, Van der Haar's got the all clear to play it up there towards the forward line. Coming out as Duckworth. Bumbles Hinchins right into his back. Ball tapped back, picked up by Thornton. Takes it away from that back pocket position. A good mark taken here by Pekin. I thought this fella played a fair game in the first half too, Bob. It's a good solid game, Lou. He's put the Ravers out of business. Hand pass to Pert. Pert's kick uh, falls a bit short at the back as Walsh. And a good mark. There's another good play today for rest. A great, great defender. Guy. Oh, he's in a bit of trouble. You give them a wrap. He's going to lose this. 
It always works out that way. Back it comes now, going after this break. He's got to try and save the day for Walsh out there. Hurd falls on top of the ball, and it's finally forced out of bounds by Walsh. Well, that was a bad mistake by Walsh because he could have easily gone back for a kick in defence. The ball out of bounds on the centre wing position. The difference only two points in favour of Fitzroy. And we're just on the 15-minute mark of this third quarter. Madden and Reeves again contesting. It's won by Reigns. And a mark almost to Thornton. I think I'd be paying that one. Thornton from the right half-back flank. Mark taken down there for Fitzroy by Pekin. As Lou said, has played a pretty good game so far. Harris. That's Leon Harris. Of course, he's been out, what, for six or seven weeks with a broken leg. Might have been more than that. I think you're about right, Lou. Conlon tried to mark it one hand against Michael Thompson. Barwick put the body in well. Folds. Short kick up towards the square. And Richardson, he fumbles. Now a chance for Fitzroy. Logan goes for the hand pass. That was... Uh, who was on the bottom of that? It was uh, Harris again. Now it's back to Turner. One of Essendon's best is their skipper, Danaher. A wobbly kick, though, after Harvey. Well tackled by Ruse. Ruse certainly making it difficult for him. Wins out. Umpire's found a free kick going Essendon's way to Harvey. Let's take a look at that again in the back, I dare say, but a little bit unfortunate. Merritt, a juggle, onto Richardson. Essendon to attack up towards their right half forward flank. Richardson off the ground, good play. Van der Haar missed it. Pert. And then Pert content to take the ball over the boundary line. Didn't really try too hard to keep it in play. Well, Van der Haar in form wouldn't have missed that, Bob. I think he was getting ready to tap the tap ball, the ball on on. Was there. Yeah. Having a bit of tapping going on now. Yes. And uh, nothing in it, just a little bit of a wrestle. And uh, That could be Billy Duckworth at the bottom. I'm not quite sure, but... Uh, <laughs> strange. I'd like to bet on it. Oh, that's Bill. Good on you, Bill. Get up and have another go in a moment, son. <laughs> hey, he gets a smile on his face and it's a bit of aggression. Mm. But you've got to have those players in, uh, when you're playing in the finals, Bob, don't you? But talking about Van der Hoe, he did signal to Duckworth that he was going to try and tap it on, and I think in doing that, he took his concentration a little bit off the ball, and that was the only reason he missed it. So a bounty throw in. In Essendon's right forward pocket. Crowd certainly coming to life. Madden and Reeves. Uh, Hinson and Duckworth are still having a few little uh, words. Neither Ruckman got a tap at it. Thornton and Harvey. And umpire John Russo will bounce it. <laughs> Hasn't been the most attractive game to watch, but it's been pretty tough out there. Two points still in favour of Fitzroy. The defensive skills of both sides are to be admired, Pete. That's why it's, uh, you know, no side is able to get a break. Merritt to Duckworth, he's slung pretty quickly by Hinchin, out it goes to Blakey in pursuit is Richardson Blakey's kick is long, up over the centre line Danaher tries to mark, Walsh backs him up though well, he won't fumble this time Kevin Walsh, brings the ball well and truly out right, and a good mark is taken by Reigns on centre wing, Reigns decides to play on, he'll go for the long kick oh, it's a long kick over the half forward on a chance for Harvey to mark, he doesn't let him down he's got it out there at half forward about 60 metres out from goal. Quickly plays on, looking there for Hawker, found him. And in my way of thinking, the Bombers are starting to look a lot better now. Short pass. And well, there's Van Der Haar. McIver away from Reigns? But Would you have taken McIver away from Reigns? I certainly wouldn't have, Bob, because I thought that McIver was one of their, well, just about their best player. They're waiting now for Van Der Haar. He's had a bad trot today for the last uh, seven or eight or nine weeks with a bad injury. This was a broken leg. That's a goal. And that put the Bombers in front. And that's a pretty handy goal against the win. Six goals, 5 41. To Fitzroy, 5 7 37. Van der Haar's first goal. And it gets Essendon into the lead. They lead by four points. And as Lou said, against the breeze. That's a pretty good position to be in. Well, there's no doubt that it's been Essendon's quarter so far. Essendon did take the, uh, Fitzroy I should say, did take the gamble and left Osborne one out down on the forward line with uh, his opponent Dunnell and it just hasn't quite worked. In fact, McGrath now has gone to full forward and Walsh has dropped back with him. Back in the centre again. Keen on the ground into the ruck in place of his uh, teammate and that of course was Reeves. Knocked out by Madden again. Bit of a fumble going on, actually it's a free kick. It'll go there to Turner, one of their best players in the first half of the game. 
It's a 15 metre penalty. This gives Turner a chance to drive it deep into attack, and that's what he should do. He's gone right over the half forward line. Ball punched out again by Eston, picked up by Hawker. They're starting to get into their stride now, the Bombers. As it goes out wide, Duckworth under the ball, couldn't quite pick it up, but he's got it under control. Well played by Duckworth. He balks, he's out there on half forward, goes for a pass. Oh, well, that could be a free kick. We'll wait and see on that. It could go back to Duckworth as if against Duckworth. Two inch in against Duckworth. Well, it couldn't have been against Duckworth, surely. Well, I don't know what happened there. He might have given me one after he kicked the ball. I didn't yeah, quite see that I was uh, following the ball. It wasn't against Duckworth. I think it was for this shot right now. And here's the shepherd. Well, a trip he's paid that for. Well, that's a ridiculous decision. 14, uh, uh, Turner's 14 gets the ball over there. Now, there's a mark taken here by Keane out there on the centre wing position. Fitzroy trailing by four points, and they're kicking with the breeze. A pretty strong one. Over there, half fourth, and they need a goal quickly here now as the pack fly. As they go now for Ruse, he's got to pick this up. He gets a hand pass out for Turner. Turner can't get his hand pass clear. That's falls at the front of the pack. They're falling over like nine pins, but don't blame them for that because it's very slippery out there. We've had plenty of rain here today at VFL Park. So just on the 21 minute mark, it's four points the difference in favour of Essendon. The ball up. Well, badly needs some goals here quickly. Picked up by Turner. Three Essendon players to send upon him. That's got to be holding the ball. Well, they're looking stronger than me, Essendon. Bob, I don't know uh, what they, you think about they're it. They're playing much better at the moment. They did in the first quarter too, Lou. So both sides have played better against the Breeze right throughout. Hawkins keep not a well directed one. And the chances for Dwyer to get the ball out. That could have been a high tackle. It will be a free kick to Fitzroy. I think it's Leon Harris. Or is it Bernie? No, it's McGrath. 15 metre penalty. Yes. McGrath will be almost at the 50 metre line when he kicks it. He's down there. Four Essendon players to one Fitzroy. And Donnell, I think, will be content to see it roll through for a point. And behind the Fitzroy. And they've kicked only one goal since quarter time. 5-8 to 6-5. A difference of three points in favour of Essendon. But the Bombers looking pretty good in this quarter. With Glenn Hawker really shining out. The mark of their skipper is it not? No. And here's Hawker again. Out to Baker. Gets around Loken. Baker from the edge of the square. Short pass. Vanderhaar marking in front of Ruse. He kicked the goal earlier to put Essendon in front. The pass to Danaher again. Danaher on centre wing. Played a fine game there, Skipper. 15 metre penalty this time. He's not taking that. Plays on straight away. Out to Stephen Clark, who's just come back onto the ground. From 45 metres out, he can score one. He has the Bombers. They're going right on with the job. The reigning premiers looking good. Five, eight to seven, five. Uh, he did call the Hawker playing extremely well. And it was Hawker who started that piece of play across the half-back line. Danaher, uh, occasionally the interchange move uh, comes really off. That's and right. that time, I think, Clark snuck in from the interchange. Fitzroy not even realising he was there. Approaching the 23-minute mark now of the third quarter. Fitzroy with the breeze. Have got no forwards at all to speak of. Clark's first goal. Knocked down by Keane. Still reigning as umpire Peter Cameron comes in. And he'll bounce it still inside the centre square. Well, rain pounding down again. And of course, those uh, goals, well, they've kicked three for this quarter, Esmond, haven't they? That's certainly been valuable to their chances here today. And they're coming home with the breeze. Good play on the part of Fitzroy. The ball comes down now to Bowles. Goes wide to the half-forward flank. Harvey. Ball tapped on by Thorpe. The chance for Harvey to pick it up. A beautiful hand pass to Richardson. Balks. He's in trouble. Tried to do too much that time. And a good decision by the umpire. And there's a bit of a wrestle going on. Right, right, Richardson this game. Why, he just, there, brother, but but why he doesn't kick the ball, Lou, I do not know. He just tries to do that a little bit too much. Well, he tries to do the fancy stuff. He was clear, and particularly when the side's in a desperate position, even though they're in front. He's won the ball well today, though. Certainly has. Then we see Blakey's kick over the half-forward line. The ball tapped to the ground again. Dwyer couldn't pick it up. And there's no doubt about it. Thompson certainly playing a lot better in this third quarter. What a shocking first half, but he's been a great player all year, Mark Thompson. And would have to be a dryer off the ground. Yeah, Thompson, I think, had two kicks in the first half, so he's had five kicks at least in this quarter, loop. Ball goes back to Leon Harris, takes the mark out there, and that's uh, about 60 metres out. That's nearly a mark there to McGrath, but the umpire's not playing that he dropped it at the last moment. 
Fitzroy finding it hard to break through the Empire span a free kick. It'll go to Fitzroy. It'll go to Leon Harris. Bernie. Bernie Harris, I should say. Bernie Harris. It'd be about 40 metres out from goal. Now, I don't know whether he can get the distance. That ball would be pretty heavy. Yet to score a goal, he's kicked two behind. The angle uh, just about directly in front. There's the kick. That's a beautiful kick uh, by uh, Bernie Harris, and it's a goal. A very handy one indeed. So at six goals, 8.44, Fitzroy to Eston, 7.5.47. And Bernie Harris would not have many more vital kicks than that one. As we see him coming now, I think he fell forward as much as anything in these conditions. A little bit lucky to get that free kick. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a free kick and it is a goal. Well, I miss some of the ones you should get sometimes, so it all squares out, Bob, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does, Lou. Three points the difference in favour of Essendon, despite that goal from Bernie Harris. 47 plays 44. We're playing time on in the third quarter. And a very scrambly start to this passage of play. Finally picked up by Stephen Clark. A ball he was nearly tipped. Could have got a free kick. His kick and turn up towards half forward. Knock on by Harvey. Past Merritt. Can Merritt get back there and pick it up? He can. Well done from the big fella. Tries to fire out the hand pass. No free kick. Getting ridden into the ground from Duckworth was Ruse. It comes out to Perk. And Gary Perk goes for the long clearing kick. McKayla. Has he taken the mark? Yep. No, he hasn't. I thought it was. Yeah, I, I thought it was too, Pete. I think the umpire indicated it may have been a mark, and uh, I think that uh, made uh, McIver hesitate a bit. He played a great game too, this fellow. McIver, seven kicks and 11 handballs so far. Well, maybe Shane Hurd got a hand for that first, and perhaps Still that's a the reason why. Knocked down by Big Madden. Leon Harris breaks clear just as the whistle goes. I don't think Leon's too impressed by that. He has to give the ball back to the umpire. Kicks in favour of Essendon, 149 to 123 today, and their marks nearly double, 54 to 30. Bomber still leading by three points. Chance for Hawker, who's been an excellent player in the third quarter. Tried to find Baker. He was up in the big the ball. Kick. Leon Baker just short of the left half forward flank. He's played an excellent game, Baker. He always gets a lot of kicks. Had a great game in the grand final last year. He's had 15 kicks so far today. Five marks and one handball. And the opportunity to once again put Essendon deep into attack. They lead by three points. He's looking for Harvey or behind the pack is Madden, but a badly directed kick of a mark to Tim Pekin. Instead of half back transferring play to the member stand side. And the mark was taken by Grant Laurie. Molly a pass towards left centre wing. Tries to get clear, or trying to get clear is Bernie Harris. Wobbly punt kick up toward 4 4. Walsh is the only player there, though, around Austin, who's been fairly quiet today. Thompson, excellent third quarter. Danaher. Short to the wing. A great out of play bounds. Bounds. Good play by Ross Thornton to get the ball away from his opponent. And a boundary throw in will follow. 28 minutes gone of this third quarter. Fitzroy uh, trailing by three points. 44 plays, 47. And Fitzroy kicking with the breeze. Reigns gets a hand pass out. Knocked on by Laurie. A chance for Thornton to pick it up. Still plenty of fumbling going on, but that ball is very slippery and it's out of bounds on the centre wing position. Well, we thought that uh, because Eston did so well in the first quarter, they'd, uh, you know, get a big... Uh, pick up a bit of uh, well, a few uh, goals Bob but they didn't in the, in the second but uh, we'll see what happens in this last quarter yes, there's nothing to indicate that Fitzroy can't play just as well against the Bruce as they did in the second quarter well it's been a defensive day uh, today it's been the battle of the defences so we'll possibly see the same result in the last there's only three points the difference nothing in it all day a very tough game not the most stylish game in the world but it's typical of these uh, final matches because the tension's so great and particularly in this one because the loser is out of business for the rest of the season. So it'll be a ball up there on the centre wing position. 44 plays, 47 in favour of Essendon. Just over the 29-minute mark of this third quarter of the 1986 elimination final. Well, he had no chance of getting clear that time, Clayton, and the umpire will ball up still on that centre wing position. Got a bit of a stalemate here at the moment. Siren just about to go for three-quarter time. Well, they haven't been long quarters, Pete. Scoring very low. 
Knocked out that time by Keane. Going through his fouls, couldn't get clear. That's Reigns trying to pass through the pack for the rest of the umpire once again. We've had about four or five ball-ups here in the last uh, two or three minutes. So play held up on that centre wing position with Eston 7-5-47, but Fitzroy 6-8-44. Plenty of players gathered around this knockout, knocked out by Matt, and Harris went without the ball that time. Hawker gets a clear kick back there to watch that to half forward line, and Van der Haas got it. it be about 80 metres out from the Eston goal. Man, a bit of dangerous play this quarter. There's the side to win the uh, third quarter, and we see Eston in front. Seven goals, five, 47 to Fitzroy, six goals, eight, 44. Just about set for the final quarter of the 1986 elimination final. Umpire Peter Cameron comes in to bounce the ball. Essendon leading by three points, but they're kicking with the breeze in this final term before 59,000 fans. Salmon starting off on the ruck. And the Bombers starting well through Richardson, down to half forward. Clark, he kicked one in the third quarter. Gets uh, dispossessed pretty quickly. Back it goes to Turner. Short to Leon Harris, at uh, centre half back. Oh, well, Richardson the tackles too high. He stopped him though, nonetheless. So the result was the desired one. This is Ruse. Reeves onto Turner, moving well downfield. Gets around Harvey, but the kick is high to half forward. Oh, McIver as he grabbed that very nearly. Danaher played a great game for Essendon. Out to uh, Mick Thompson. Logan. Clayton. Clayton kick is short. Big pack of players down there. Donnell down. Bernie Harris. Oh, he didn't see Condon in the goal square, but the kick is okay. It's a goal. Oh, what a shot. That's his second, 7-8 seven, to 7-5, seven, and Fitzroy hit the front. That's their first goal at that end of the ground. Just how important was that goal straight after the last quarter, Bob? An absolutely vital goal. I, I did think that it uh, should have been a mark to McIver further up the ground, but it matters not now. In fact, it's probably an advantage because a great snap goal by Bernie Harris, and that will lift the confidence of every Fitzroy play. Seven kicks to Bernie Harris, three handballs, and now two goals. Detroit lead by three points. We're set for a titanic finish, it looks like, in the Eliminator. Barwick gets offloaded. Now towards the edge of the square. Might be a free kick for Gary Foles. It will be for one in the back. Then Foles to take the free kick near the centre wing position. Bonners with the breeze. Foles' kick is long. Up towards half forward. Strong mark to Ruse in front of the pack. Well, as you said, Bob, that, uh, there's a bit of a wrestle going on uh, at the other end of the ground, about, about the centre-half forward position. Great mark to Ruse, and that goal would certainly give the side a lot more confidence. The ball hits the... Uh, we think Reeves may have been reporting that scuffle as it's picked up by Danaher. The kick is not a good one. I think it might have been Walsh. There's a chance now for Keane to get a hand pass back to McIver. Gets it back to Keane. They're in a bit of trouble. It's smothered. The ball come on. There's one in the back to Fitzroy. It'll go to Bernie Harris. Fitzroy get a goal here now. And Leon Harris, I should say. We've got the two Harris brothers playing here today. Eight kicks to Harris, Luke. Well, he hasn't done badly since coming on the ground. Ball punched out again. Thompson went without the ball. They stack up here, and the umpire will ball it up right on the 50 metre mark in Fitzroy's attacking zone. So it's 50 points, Fitzroy to less than 47 into this last quarter of the 1986 elimination final by just on three minutes. Well, that will certainly give them a bit of confidence, that last goal kicked by, uh, by Harris. Particularly with the fact that there's no doubt that the breeze has dropped a little, Lou. Well, there's another a bit of a scrimmage developing there, still around about the 50 metre mark. Maybe a busy night at the Tribune, wasn't it? Well, they keep on reporting everybody who would know I'm playing next uh, week. Knocked out by uh, Salmon, not a good knockout. Turner tries to spin at the pack back as Connell, he tries to crash his way through the pack for Reston, and the umpire will still ball it up. But it's still down there on Fitzroy's attacking line. That's uh, something in their favour. Three and a half minutes gone, or just over three and a half minutes gone of this last quarter. Grabbed by Walsh, has been a fine play today. The kick was a grubber, back towards the centre of the ground. There's a go there for uh, the ball to be picked up by Kane. He gets a hand pass back to Hinch and out there to Leon Harris. A hand pass over to Lowry and Fitzroy looking good as they go back into attack. But coming across there is Salmon, goes for a hand pass. 
It's grabbed by Duckworth. They've got him down. Uh, Thompson, it is. Mark Thompson gets the ball wide out towards the wing position. Ruse the big punch. And the umpire still called play. It was picked up by Keane out there on the centre wing position. And Thompson drops that one. They're all pumping. That's Bernie Harris down there on the bottom of the pack. And the umpire will ball it up on Fitzroy's half forward line. Yeah. Isn't umpire down? That was a result when Ruse came over the top. And... Uh, Hawker, Glenn Hawker, and Hawker has been an excellent player for three quarters, so... Especially in the third term, Bob. And so a bounce, won by Salmon. Picked up by Stephen Clark, and a mark is taken by Turner. Official attendance today, 59,420. Turner, now oh, he's gone inboard. Mark taken by Blakey. Not really any closer to goal. And Essendon seem to have panic a little bit at the moment, Pete. Well, if it's Roy really finding something, aren't they? Obviously, David Parkin said, this is it, give it everything. And all duck or no dinner, Salmon palms it down. Picked up by Donnell. Short ball, Turner fumbles. It's very greasy out there. Oh, Clark over his opponent, Laurie, a high one. Salmon, Coles. Kick is short. Elshaw. Gets a bit of distance with that kick. Fumbled by Hawker, seems to be okay. Now Keane has the chance on left centre wing. He's gone for a short pass, tries to find Pekin. Clark's right there with him. You'll have to be good to get clear of him. Not a good hand pass. Good pressure applied by Essendon. In goes Merritt. It's out of bounds, and the throw will take place on the centre wing. Very dark and gloomy with the rain still falling. I think they have panicked a bit, the Bombers, Bob. They need to steady down a bit, wouldn't they? Certainly would. Here out goes Essendon's way. Picked up by Thornton. Donnell doesn't get the bounce that he wanted. Finally, it's hit down to Thompson, who's been excellent since half-time. Long kick up towards the centre wing position, and the mark is taken by Keane in front of his opposite number 25, Roger Merritt. Being whistled back on the mark by umpire Peter Cameron. It's McIver and Walsh, out of bounds. I thought um, Vanderhaar did well at centre-half forward in the third quarter, and he'd still be there for mine. Boundary throw it. Left half-forward flank for the Roys, Salmon and Reeves. Won by Reeves, picked up by Laurie. Up to the 50 metre line, Richard Osborne, he's been very quiet. Listening defenders are going to do job on him. Here's a chance for Harris again, if he can get there off the ground, might have been the go. Hit the point post. It was kicked by Thompson of Essendon yeah. anyway. 7-9 to 7-5, Detroit lead by four points. You know, thriller at league headquarters. And Folds will bring the ball back into play as we approach the seven minute mark. Well, of course, this rain would certainly help Fitzroy's cause, Bob, too. Won't do them any harm, that's for sure. Picked up by Harris again. Shoots it across towards the full forward position. Cronland truly marked that one. Grabbed by Mick Thompson. A hand pass coming out now. Umpire said it'll be a free kick. He was grabbed too high. Lucky. Might have been a bit lucky to get away with that one. Out wide now to uh, Clark. Clark and Turner go for this one. It'll go to the boundary line. Kept in play by uh, Clark, and it was a wise thing as it went back to uh, Leon Harris over to Turner again. He's been a fine player looking for Conlon. He's only had about two touch. He could kick a goal here. Straightens up, fires. It might be a goal. It is. Well, it's one point. Well, he hasn't been in the play very much. Oh, that looked as though it could have been a goal. So it's five points the difference into this last quarter by just on eight minutes. And Fitzroy went into attack for most of this last quarter. Ball back into play by Donnell. Rains grabbed that one. Out there at half back. Goes for a hand pass over there to Foles. Foles at half back is clear. He's got a paddock to run in. No one going at him. He's taken the ball right up to the centre wing position. Kicked it across the centre half forward. The ball tapped to the ground. There's a hand pass coming out now to Hinch and goes for a short pass. It's a beauty. Grabbed here by McIver. He's been a fine play today, a short pass. In goes Bernie Harris right from the 50 metre mark. Let's play at the goal. Got a good kick. And there'll be a mark, a great mark there to Mick Thompson in defence. And there's been plenty of pressure on this uh, Eston defence in this last five minutes of play. Out it goes wide, right across goals. It could be dangerous, but Mark Thompson's marked the ball on the 50 metre line. He played, he played on. He played on. Well, did. he's going to get a 15 metre penalty, I think, Bob, isn't he? He's going to pull him back. He's going to have another attempt. He's going to have another kick. So into this quarter by just on nine minutes, five points the difference. Still in favour of Fitzroy. Van der Haar. Walsh, at left half back flank. He's got a very good player. Breaks the tackle well there from Hinchin. Long kick by the Essendon key defender. Down to Harvey. Richardson backs him up. 
Looks for a hand pass at the clock. Clark's already scored one. Estimate in front by a point. It's got to come back, I think. No, he's going to play it. He's talking to Clark. Now, what's happening here? Well, it's, uh, he must have said it was a throw. I don't know what he said it was. Well, Clark was shaking his head. I think he may be reporting for wasting time. Well, we watch it going now. Well, I can't see anything wrong. Well, you've got me. That's one for what's your decision tomorrow. Anyway, the kick goes to Fitzroy through Thornton. Conman has to knock the ball away from Michael Thompson. Keen in front of Hawker as the rain teams down here at BFL Park. And the ball dribbles over the boundary line. Does it, or is it kept in play? Now, it's kept in play, and that suits Essendon well. It's on to Donnell. Hawker again. Best player on the ground after half-time in my book. Merritt. Now, it's Essendon's turn to attack. Duckworth behind. Elshaw. Out to Duckworth. Not a long kick. Gary Pert has not made a mistake all day. He caught he play, on. play on. Hawker. Shot at goal. Is through. Now they're in front by a point. Well, what did he call play? Was that a mark to Pert? Might have been touched before it got to it. And wait by 53. It must have been touched. There's no other reason that uh, you know, it wasn't a high kick as we watch now. And, well, it could well have been touched by the player up the ground. And, uh, well, play on was the only decision. So Hawker putting Essendon in front. His second goal. Duckworth also has two for Essendon. Stephen Clark one, Baker one, Richardson one. And for Fitzroy, their main goal kicker is Bernie Harris. This is the 1986 elimination final. From Van der Haas on the back line, Pete Walsh down on the forward line. One point the difference in favour of Essendon, and it is teaming. We're just over the 11 minute mark of the last quarter. Knocked out uh, that time by Salmon. Still a scrimmage developing. Rain absolutely pouring down here at VFL Park. Essendon in front by a point, and there's been nothing in it all day. It's really been the battle of the defences. Salmon gets another knockout. Baker tried to crash his way through the pack, but there's plenty of play players milling around there, and the umpire will ball it up. It's pretty hard to get it out of there and crash through a pack, Bob. Particularly in these conditions. Oh, <laughs> golly, it's absolutely pouring down. Ball given away by Barwick out there to watch that uh, half forward line. Uh, Mark Thompson couldn't hold that. Picked up by Danaher. Down he goes. He gets it in the back. Mark Thompson threw it away to Elsa, but they soon call him. Back it goes there to Donnell. Back to Richardson. Down he goes. They're not messing about. They're throwing themselves at the ball. That's around the neck to, uh, to Baker. And Baker's got the free kick. A quick hand pass coming over to Danaher. Short pass. It'll be OK. Mad by Salmon. Runs to centre half forward. He has a long kick towards the goal. Elshaw's there and it's tapped on him through for one point. But every point counts here today. So it's seven goals, 10.52 Fitzroy to Eston. Eight goals, 6.54. Two points the difference. Into this last quarter by just over 12 and a half minutes. Ball back into play again. Oh, God, there's a race going on here now. It's a big chance at bounce. Beautifully for Thornton out there on the wing position. Drives the ball over the half forward line. At the back is Hurd. The successful knockout. Barber over runs the ball. Has a go for Foles. It's got a bounce right. Doesn't bother to pick it up and play it safe. That's the only way to go. Out it comes now. Ruse is having trouble picking it up, and it's out of bounds on the centre wing position. It must be mighty difficult to grab that ball out there at the moment, Bob. As, as the old saying goes, Lou, goes, Lou, next goal could win this one. That's much. right. A very low scoring game. 52 plays, 54. Just over the 13 minute mark. Salmon got the knock. Out comes back to Salmon again. Umpire still calling play on us. It comes out now. Well, no one can get there. It's falling over like nobody's business, and the umpire's going to ball it up. Well, I suppose a wise umpire wouldn't pay a free kick amongst that mob, would he? Leon Harris might be a little bit sore. Here it is. Oof. Yes, they hurt in a day like today. And tears to your eyes. Salmon. Wins that one. Down Turner, but he couldn't do much about it. Must agree with Bob. I think the next goal will probably win it. 14 minutes gone. Again, it won't be a long quarter. 
odds favouring Essendon, kicking with the breeze and the rain or whatever. Salmon. That's a free kick, isn't it? No. Not played by the umpire to Conlon. McIver. Out of bounds on centre wing. In front of the BFL Park members' stand. And that's the best place to be this afternoon because patrons in the yard are getting drenched. And there are a lot of them. And for 59,000, the attendance this afternoon. Probably about halfway through the final quarter. Salmon tries to kick off the ground out to Osborne. Donnell in pursuit. Osborne's kick down to Thompson, who's played an excellent second half after he had only two kicks in the first two quarters. Danaher has been good all afternoon, but he can't beat Ruse on this occasion. Ruse's kick out towards left centre wing and left half forward flank. Bernie Harris stumbles, allows Thompson in. Oh, good tackle from Ruse. Now it finally picked up, uh, who's that, Harris, I think. Osborne, out of bounds. It's a great piece of play by Paul Ruse there. And, and it's not a stat, it's just a tackle. It's a stat to the clubs, and a great tackle by Ruse. So a real chance here for Fitzroy. They might not get too many more of them. Reeves and Salmon, easily won by Salmon. But it will beat, I think, Stephen Clark out of bounds. No, it hasn't. McIver in pursuit, but can't catch him. Long kick by the Bomber Rover, up towards centre wing. Great mark to Keane. And he'll put Fitzroy back into attack again. With a short pass. The recipient is Turner. Oh, where was that to? McIver, perhaps. Bad play from Fitzroy. Baker brushes the tackle from Turner easily. Knocked away by Perth. Well upfield. Now three Fitzroy players are there. It's left to Ruse. Harris. Walsh. Oh, this fellow's played a fine game, hasn't he? Walsh, so is this fellow. He's my best anyway, Hawker. Hawker to half forward, finds Duckworth. He's already kicked two goals. Barwick not letting him go. And Duckworth to put Essendon deep into attack. Well, Duckworth at centre half forward, drives the ball down to the forward. Pockets a go now. Farrell Shaw kicks it off the ground, but he's off target. And it's through for one point. Seven goals, 10 52. Fitzroy to Western 8 7 55. A difference of th uh, three points. 16 and a half minutes gone of this last quarter. Well, Bob, it hasn't been the most stylish game in the world, but by God, it's been a tough one, hasn't it? Yes, um, although well, ultimately we be <laughs> a loser, and both sides can hold their heads up. It's been a, a, a wonderful display of team spirit. Well, we see a free kick going there to Barwick. He's down there on the uh, half-back line. So Barwick kicks the ball to the wing position. Coming across as Reeves, the ball pushed out again by uh, Foles, and it's out of bounds. So it's out of bounds on the centre wing position with uh, Essendon eight goals, seven fifty-five to Fitzroy seven ten fifty-two. Salmon got the tap down. Alshaw couldn't get clear. They pounce him. That's McIver grabbing him, and he's played a fine game for Fitzroy today too. It's been a battle of the defences. Forwards finding it very difficult, but the conditions certainly don't favour the forwards today. Knocked out by Salmon again. Back it comes to Blakey, but Clark's got him covered. Clark trying to get clear. He ducks the head. Oh, nicely taken away that time by Fitzroy. And it was Keane getting it back there towards that uh, half-back uh, line uh, for Essendon, or half-forward line for Fitzroy, and the ball is out of bounds. Waiting now for the ball to come back into play. Still three points the difference as we approach the 18-minute mark. Knocked out by Salmon. Back it comes to Clark. Clark hooks it back with the left boot up towards that half-forward line. Oh, Walsh flies over the top of the pack, just about marked it, but he's driven it down towards the 50-metre line on the attacking zone. And Walsh has been a very good player today, hasn't oh, he? Played a great game, Lou. And, uh, in fact, uh, I, I doubt very much whether I would have moved him to the forward line. So good was he on, in the back line. But even so, uh, Kevin Sheedy obviously felt that the way Walsh was playing, he'd give them the lift there, and he's done just that. 14 kicks, he's had in five marks. It goes to Richardson. I think that rebounded off a knee or whatever. Yes, touched. So a boundary throw in again. Isn't it, I feel, have just about got Fitzroy's measure. There's only a few points in it, but... Only need like... to score, Pete, either way. Yes. I wouldn't like to say that yet, Pete. Well, Fitzroy don't look like scoring too many goals. <laughs> Isn't it not exactly no, getting a lot of them either? But they're doing most of the attacking and kicking with the Bruce. Anyway, we've got about uh, probably 10 minutes left for play. Well, I think Bob may have hit the nail on the head when he said uh, the next goal could win the game. Couldn't agree more. 
Of course, if Essendon get it, they will win it because they've already got uh, an advantage of three points. Out to Folds. Now Folds is at left half forward flank. And then gets a 15 metre penalty, which will bring him up almost to the 50 metre line. And against McIver. A play on call. Long kick by Folds. Merritt in front. Walsh went through. Richardson. Walsh. Oh, doesn't know which way to go. Now he gets clear. Well off target, though, out of bounds on the floor. It will be a free kick for Fitzroy. And the recipient in the left back pocket will be Thornton. Now to Merritt being told where to stand on the mark. Doesn't do so, so it gets a 15 metre penalty against him. And it's still teaming down. Reigns. Leon Harris. Looks around Danaher. Looks for and finds Graham Hinchin. Just gets clear of Duckworth. That might have been on the shoulder. The umpire says no. Donnell's on the bottom of that pack. Can't pick it up. Tries to scoop it out effectively, but picked up by Paul Ruse. Ruse's kick is a short one. Barwick in front. Folds. Good play. Two Essendon players are there. It's left for Baker, one of their leading kick getters. Down goes McIver. Heard. Breaks the tackle well from Loken. Short pass in towards centre field. Mark to Walsh. Danaher, two of Essendon's best. Elshaw. Fifty-five metres out, but the kick is not a long one. And that is touched. One point, four points, the difference in favour of Essendon. So Fitzroy must get a goal soon if they're to have any chance of advancing to the first semi-final. 56 plays, 52. 21 minutes gone. The ball out there to the half back on a chance for Turner. We see Clark fall over. Turner's out there on his own. Oh, he's got to get rid of this back. It comes now to uh, Pekin. Pekin with a hand cast up. Uh, Barwick down he goes. The ball comes back, but the umpire's playing the advantage rule. He was paying a free kick. Over it goes to Turner again. Towards the centre of the ground. And a good mark taken here by uh, Leon Harris. Leon Harris quickly up the mark. Away from Thompson. Kicks it out to that uh, half forward line. Range was held on. Didn't have the ball. That was against Bernie Harris. And he'll take the free kick out there at half back. Leston in front by four points. And there's no doubt about the free kick. And, um, and sure, Bernie Harris doesn't need to be told. Attempted knock on by Hawker. In fact, it was a successful knock on. Down to Hinchin and Duckworth. Hawker again. Harvey. Beautiful blind hand pass onto Merritt. Merritt from 50 metres out could sew the game up with a goal at one point. So Fitzroy need a goal now to put them in front. Five points in favour of the Bombers. 7-10 to 8-9. 36 very wet players out there. And another 59,000 spectators likewise. This is key. Good tackle by Reigns, but out to Leon Harris. And they've got to do something with this forward thrust. McIver gets cannoned into by Frank Donnell. No 15 metre penalty. McIver from left centre wing. Osborne, Conlon, Mick Thompson, well played. He'll be content to see the ball out of bounds. Pekin, now it's over the line. 24 and a half minutes gone, so probably only about two and a half minutes left for play. The Troy season, I fear, is just about over. Reeves and Salmon. Clark and Turner. Clark wins that one. Oh, it should have been a mark taken by Keane. The umpire has played it to him. Now oh, he's got to bring it back. Keane from the left half-back flank. Time ticking away. We're into time on, Luke. Certainly oh. up. We just over the 25-minute uh, mark. Five points the difference. And Reigns looked for a pass. Why don't they go along with it? Oh, with the I don't know why they're messing about with the ball so heavy. Lowy tries to tap it on over to McKay. He's grabbed. Hawk is there too. They pile up. Well, there was nearly a throw out that time. Kicked out while a chance for Reigns to grab that. A hand pass coming back to Hurd. Couldn't grab that. Plenty of fumbling going on. As we see uh, Harris kick the ball high, but it doesn't travel far. Pushed out that time by uh, Salmon over to Hawke. He was grabbed, didn't have the ball. Oh, hold the ball against it. <laughs> well, I thought it went the other way that time. Down it goes to centre-half forward. 
Foul steps the ball back. There's a chance now for uh, Thompson to get clear. Grabbed by Conlon. It goes back to uh, Richardson. A hand pass over to Vanderhaar. He's clear out there on the centre wing position. That's the way to go. A long kick, but there's nobody there. And the ball taken in defence that time uh, for, by Keane. Keane's kick is out wide. The ball driven back out towards the wing position. Conlon overruns it. Mick Thompson's grab, but doesn't matter. Hurd gets a hurried kick. It doesn't travel very far. But this will suit Aston. Uh, Richardson ran into a brick wall. He's lost that. It's on the ball. And the Fitzroy side have still got a chance as the ball comes down there now. Harris dodges. He's clear. Goes for the long kick. They get a goal here. Conlon's got it. He could kick a goal to put him in front. He has. Oh, they're in front. By a point. By a point. And they might have won the game here. What a sensation. Oh, well, he's only had a touch all day. This fellow, he's got the goal that could have won the match. He's had five kicks only, he's got the ball to kick the goal, watch it again. And Good play on the part of Harris. Leon Harris puts it out, a lovely pass to Conlon. And he cannot afford to relax at any stage. There won't be much time on it all. 27 minutes gone now, Bob. Well, they've got to get a goal now, the Bombers. There she goes, a point the difference. The ball knocked out back towards the bottom half four. That's Walsh trying to do a wham main job, but it's not it. Salmon gets it off the ground. Walsh couldn't pick it up. It's Harris, and what a quarter he's played. He's done a marvellous job. There's a go for the bomber skipper. Danaher kicks it out wide, looking for Hawker. Hawker and Duckworth there together. Hawker's got the chance. He's only got to pick it up. A hand pass to Duckworth, but not a good one. And the ball is going for the boundary line. It's out of bounds. It's about 50 metres out from the Aston goal, but they're trailing by a point. 27 and a half, just on 28 minutes gone of this last quarter. And I think it may be falling to the lap of Fitzroy, Peter. Well, I said a few moments ago, I thought Fitzroy's season had ended. What a great fighting spirit displayed there by the Lions today. Full credit to them, even if they lose this match, but they're a point in front. Now, there it is, they have won it! Congratulations, Fitzroy and the Lions are into the first semi-final. The reigning premiers are out of contention. What a sensational finish to an elimination Scores in a sensational finish to the elimination final. Fitzroy getting up virtually in the last kick of the day. 8-10-58 to Essendon, 8-9-57. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports.